Let's hit play. And explain to them what happened to our family and to me. And not once has any leadership stood up and said, this isn't biblical. You should not be in leadership. Honestly, you you should be gracious to this family and not be that you're not in prison. But no one has taken him out of leadership, ever considered it, it sounds like. So as I've told my story along the way, um, I met someone who's now retired pastor. Um, he has been retired for a couple of years. He heard my story. And he is a strong advocate in the Southern Baptist Convention to um, expose clergy that are abusive, especially to children. And he has a friend that Dee Parsons, the lady that has the Wartburg watch post or blog, and he encouraged me to reach out to her and share my story because they still work together to expose and, and get this out of church. It really should be out of everywhere. We shouldn't have it at all in our world. but you know, anything we can all do to work together. And um, statistics show that people that abuse children typically don't stop. Hmm. So that's well, always can a I, concern as well. Can I ask you something? Because you, so you agreed you did that interview. Um, mm-hmm. What she said, I, I went to the Wartburg watch and that was the webpage that I had pulled up. Oh, that, okay. that I failed on keeping the tab open or whatever. Uh, she's, she's not wrong. Like that type of abuse isn't something like, oh, it was a mistake. Like hypothetically, one of us has a drunken one night stand with somebody and gets caught. Like, oh my God, that was a mistake. Like, I I love you. I don't want to break up the family. Like whatever I need to do to restore this relationship is very different than somebody at, in their mid-20s grooming a little girl before she's a teenager, like that that's a different classification. Yeah. And the data is that there's no one offs there. There's no This isn't an anomaly. Now I don't have any evidence to suggest that he did not walk in purity, as he said, like I ever since then I've been walking in purity. By the way, it's such a horseshit I just hate those that language like, oh ever since then I've been walking in purity. What Whatever that means. I hope he did. But that type of person that does that, maybe he's an an anomaly. The averages suggest it keeps happening. Or it doesn't happen once. Yeah. So. Yep. All right. You want me to hit it again? Yeah, yeah. I want to hear his question. And that interview went very wide. Did you have any idea? Because what you were describing is a situation where you and your family were going when you were seeing that this particular pastor was out there, Robert Morris right. is out there getting a new position or going somewhere, you would go out there and you would let people know. And you said that people, nobody really stepped up to the plate to stop that at, at right. all along that way. So did you have any idea that when you did this particular interview, that it was going to have such a monumental effect? I mean, he has since resigned from his position. It has, right. It is one of the biggest faith stories of the year at this point. Right. Did you have any idea it would be that big of a story? Faith story. I mean, that's weird. I, I, I did. I think because his church is one of, if not the largest me- mega church in the U S and, um, anytime you have that kind of publicity in anything, I think something like this is going to cause an uproar. Um, I didn't do it for that reason. I did it because for such a time as this, I don't, all I can explain is God's timing has aligned. I would never have been prepared for this myself um, any sooner, I don't think. So I'm 54 years old and I just, I know that my maturity level, just being a mom of, you know, trying to protect my own children, I could not have walked this path that I'm walking today any sooner, I don't think. So I do believe that God's timing is part of it. And and I do believe that he's going to use it probably to reveal even bigger things. I don't know. There's things that are starting to come out of the woodwork. So we'll see. I just hope and pray there aren't a whole lot of other you know, victims, but that's part of it too, is if there are mm. get help, come on, you know, let's, let's get Bring on it to the light. recovery. Yeah. Because it is lifelong. 
you know, I think that it's important that she's explaining there. Maybe if I'm if I'm reading between the lines of what she's saying, she was younger. She was processing this stuff. She didn't. Maybe she didn't have the words to describe it. She didn't have the way to fully wrap her head around. It. I think she'd also describe that it was like she felt like she was seduced as a kid. It was or the, what was the way that she phrased it to her to her um, therapist. It was, it it was wasn't something mean. like he wasn't mean to me. Yeah. And so it, at some level, she didn't. I, I'm I'm gonna put words in her mouth, but I imagine that means she didn't feel bad or, or as badly or bad in the same way because of what was happening to her. And as a result, that would probably put a, for sure puts a kid in a weird place to be like, uh, I don't, am I supposed to, how am I supposed to feel about this? So uh, I think there's probably some skepticism from people. Hey, why now? And she's kind of trying to address that. Right. And, and what I gather from her response is, the reason why now is because uh, it took me until this point in my life where I could fully process and understand this stuff and be able to like speak to it at this level. She right. talked about sharing with other churches, which kind of sucks too. If, if I don't know, let's give this hypothetical, guys. Uh, you are at a church in a position of leadership. Let's say you're an elder on the board and someone comes up to you and says, hey, You've got this new guy who's going to be, looks like he's going to start te- teaching at your church. Let me tell you something about him. How do you respond to that? Oh, and so, he tells me what? Let me tell she, you. She, she's, oh, she, she, said, did, she, she described this. this. Yeah, yeah. She described being at other churches, going up yeah. to that leadership and saying, hey, let me tell you about this guy. And said that basically there was n- effectively no response from those yeah, leaders. Yeah, follow up. There was no follow up. There was no change. There was no difference. It was, it like fell on deaf ears. So I'm asking you guys, if you're given a situation, she comes up to you and says, "Hey, let me tell you something about your pastor. I think you should know." How do you respond to that? Yeah, uh, I I do what should have been done years ago, which at her church, which would be, let's set up a date to, you know a lunch to sit down, talk about this. Tell me, you know, the history, where you're from, how you know this pastor and, and go about it that way. And then when it comes up, yeah, he stepped down for a couple of years. And they're like, he did step down for a couple of years. Okay. The red flag should start going up and then it should, this should be nipped in the butt pretty quick. And in the butt. He, yeah. And I'm then the elders sure in the bud, but whatever. And then the elders, I'll take in the bud. Would what? be talking, <laughs> would be having that conversation with this pastor. So that's, I mean, it seems normal, and that's why I'm like, what? Who the hell keeps dropping the ball in these situations? Yeah. I want to go back. I want to know, and, and I think I, this story is not done. No, it might just be beginning to where it's like we're going to uncover correspondence not we although that would be a scoop if there we was, uncovered there was correspondence between her and him I, so I read a little bit on this she sent an email to him and basically said a couple of years ago hey I want you to I want you to pay for my therapy I think is what she was saying I think you should pay for my therapy and his response was something to the effect of um, my, my attorneys told me not uh, that I shouldn't be paying you and that, and that that would put you in a situation. I think basically he was alluding to, hey, the way that you're going about this can be construed as blackmail. Um, so this is not the right way to go about it. Not, I'm not letting him off the hook, by the way. Right. I'm kind of interpreting the events. Now, also, that, was, that is possible, like in a weird, fucked up way, where the, uh, like if this goes yeah. to court, his legal team would be like, he threat. She threatened him with you know. If whatever. you don't pay me, yeah, I know. And so she's hurting. I'm uh, imagining. And so if you're hurting, you're not going to like think about going through all the proper legal channels to do this stuff. But uh, there is evidence that one of the elders at the time got a hold of the email and responded to her. So and her email is like detailing, "Hey, you did these things. People who do these things." don't get off the hook. They pay money, they go to jail. And you haven't done any of those things. 
And so this elder got it and kind of reached out to her and was like, hey, let's talk about this kind of thing. So that, the reason I mentioned that is that it, um, it, it kind of shows, it shows you that there was some deeper awareness at the elder level of what was going on there. And that elder should have been like, let me validate this thing. If this is real, we should be going to the authorities and talking about this. I don't know if statute of limitations stuff works out, but... In Texas, it doesn't. Well, reputation, so, I mean... What, what do you mean in Texas? I think... There's no statute of limitations? I don't remember. There was two states that where this could apply, and I don't remember the details, okay. one of which has a statute of limitations. And I think in Texas, the stat there would be no statute of limitations on this. So... There's potentiality for juiciness when it comes to uh, yeah putting him away or or legally okay. g- getting that that stuff. So that stuff, you know, that's a technical le- legal term. Obviously, Jeff. No, I just don't know. I don't know where. I don't know why this continues to happen. Where l- later down the road, ten twenty years, you're like, how many adults drop the ball, or Elders, people in charge, people in leadership. Yeah. Why? I, I, I mean, I, I'm going to answer my own question a little bit, and it's like uh, we don't want to rock the boat. Oh, something happened. Okay, I'm. Uh, he served some. He, he stepped down, so he kind of s- served, you know, a little bit of time away from this. So, you know, doesn't isn't he, you know, have the right to come back and make a living, type of thing, and. I, with tithes and offerings it's, oh Fuck my that. gosh God. is there some like did you guys at any point in time in your mind go to any connection between these types of indiscretions that's a really the nicest way I can describe it um, and Sin. the inter, the entertainment industry of which there's been plenty of examples of this as well of of inappropriate behavior towards like child actors and stuff like that Diddy, I'm looking at you. You know, uh, my it, mind didn't go there. I actually but, reached out to Diddy, but he hasn't <laughs> gone back to me. But the point, yeah, like there's a what is is there some sort of strange additional connection? Is it the same sort of personality that's like the power hungry personality? Institutions of power, and that kids are more vulnerable to being because there's so much over powered over because, because there's so much trust. These and, well, and can, they can't fight and in, back and in entertainment there's money and so you know things get blurred i i think i i would say i i know things get blurred just from having heard all the terrible stories in the entertainment industry where people are like well we just you know we wanted to make it so you know we just did what we had to do or i did what i had to do and it's females and have you seen justin bieber he's a generational (laughs) talent and men you know, just falling into the, he is. you know, this will be okay. I spilled. Yeah, and with the entertainment stuff, it's it's the quest for money might lead you to make mistakes. I want fame. This is the path to do it. I'm going to compromise and sleep with the producer. Or, or ch- no, I'm thinking of it differently though. I, I'm I'm talking about like I was going to contrast or- it. Oh. child or child actors who the parents might even have a glimpse of like what might be happening and they'll be like oh, they look the other way this is 100 percent getting shit, to live their dream <laughs> right i feel like we haven't said 100 percent in like 14 episodes and i <laughs> just did it i'm sorry we still haven't but the connection the connection <laughs> back to the, to the church is there's trust a pastors to be trusted, elders to be trusted, the people who are serving in the church are to be trusted. And if you're a kid, if you're if you're a kid her age, and there's this young pastor that's um in his time, like, you know, this charismatic guy that has a gift for speaking. Yeah. And is like it closer to God than you can be. And you just want to be close to God and be loved by God. That's a seductive pull. And so it's not a, a stretch unfortunately it's it's not a stretch to where it's like hey we are gonna or not we um where she's looking at him and it's just like he it's 
way easier to groom somebody like that yeah. 